Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of World of Warships with Captain Wild Bill Kelso. Today, we're going to take a look at the Tier 2 German cruiser SMS Dresden. The Dresden was laid down in Hamburg at the Blomann Voss shipyards in 1906, was launched on the 4th of October 1907, and was finally completed on the 14th of November 1908. The Dresden measured 388 feet in length, with a beam of 44 feet and a draft of 18 feet. She weighed approximately 4,268 tons while fully loaded. She was powered by two Parsons steam turbine engines, which combined delivered a top speed of 24 knots. The engines were powered by 12 coal-fired water tube boilers, and the Dresden was capable of carrying up to 900 tons of coal maximum, which allowed her to travel a range of 3,600 nautical miles. She was armed with 10 10.5-centimeter guns, each mounted in single mounts, along with 8 5-pounder 55 caliber guns, 4 machine guns, and 2 torpedo tubes. The ship was capable of carrying a crew of 343 enlisted men and 18 officers. After being commissioned to the German Navy on the 14th of November 1908, the Dresden was assigned to the German Navy's High Seas Fleet to begin her sea trials. However, on the 28th of November 1908, the Dresden experienced a collision with another ship. The other ship that the Dresden collided into was a Swedish sailing ship known as the Cecilie. As a result of the collision, the Cecilie sank, and the Dresden's starboard propeller shaft was damaged. It was shoved in approximately 1.2 inches, and as a result, necessitated six months' worth of repairs. And it wasn't to be the last time the Dresden would collide with another ship. On the 16th of February 1910, she experienced another collision, this time with the German light cruiser, the SMS Konigsberg. As a result of the collision, the Dresden was heavily damaged, but no men on either ship were injured or killed. When World War I broke out in August of 1914, the Dresden, now under the command of forgotten Captain Fritz Ludica, sailed to the South Atlantic to begin operations off the Brazilian coast as a commerce raider. From August to October of 1914, the Dresden was successful in sinking two British merchant ships, the SS Drumcliffe and the SS Hyades. Captain Ludica only sunk these two merchant ships after he had ensured that both of their crews had been successfully evacuated. On October the 12th, 1914, the Dresden's career as a commerce raider came to an end because she was ordered to join the German Navy's East Asia Squadron under the command of Vice Admiral Maximilian von Spee. On the 1st of November, von Spee sailed his squadron to the port of Cornell in Chile after learning the British 4th Cruiser Squadron was an anchor there. At 1600 hours on the 1st, the German cruiser Leipzig spotted the first of the British cruisers, and by 1834 hours, the distance had been close enough that the Germans finally opened fire. The Dresden at first engaged the British armed merchant cruiser, the HMS Otranto, and after firing three salvos, the Otranto broke off from the engagement. The Dresden then joined the Leipzig in firing at the cruiser HMS Glasgow, and together they managed to f successfully hit the British warship approximately five times. At 19.30 hours, the Dresden and the Leipzig were ordered by von Spee to begin launching torpedoes at the remaining British warships, and the Dresden managed to spot for a brief time the HMS Glasgow, but it managed to escape into the oncoming nighttime darkness and haze. It then encountered the Leipzig, and believing it to be a British warship, the Dresden's crew loaded a torpedo into one of its tubes and was about ready to fire it until both ships were able to confirm their identities. The Battle of Cornell was a major German victory over the British and resulted in the sinking of the two British cruisers HMS Good Hope and the HMS Monmouth, along with all of their crews, which amounted to a total of 1,600 British dead, along with the commander of the British squadron, Rear Admiral Christopher Craddock. The German victory was to be short-lived, however, and the British responded to their defeat at the Battle of Cornell by sending a large squadron consisting of the battle cruisers HMS Inflexible and HMS Invincible, the armored cruisers HMS Cornwall, HMS Kent, and HMS Carnivorn, and the armed merchant cruiser HMS Macedonia, along with the two light cruisers HMS Bristol and HMS Glasgow. The British force arrived at Stanley Harbor, located in the Falkland Islands, on the 7th of December, 1914. However, the next day, on the 8th of December, in an attempt to raid the Falkland Islands for coal for their ships, von Spee and his East Asia squadron arrived. However, von Spee and his squadron didn't realize that there was an entire British cruiser squadron sitting in Stanley Harbor. 
At the time, the British squadron was taking on coal, but the battleship HMS Canopus, which was grounded as a guard ship for Stanley Harbor, spotted the oncoming German force and opened fire and managed to stop the German advance dead in its tracks. By the time von Spee realized he was outgunned, it was too late, and he and his squadron made a mad dash for the open sea. The British fleet left Stanley Harbor at 1,000 hours and made chase. By 1,300 hours, the British cruisers HMS Inflexible and HMS Invincible managed to catch up with the Germans and open fire. The Invincible and the Inflexible turned and fired broadsides at the German heavy cruiser SMS Scharnhorst, which was also von Spee's flagship. The Scharnhorst was heavily damaged and began to list. By 1617 hours, after the list progressively got worse, the Scharnhorst met her fate and sank. Shortly before the Scharnhorst sank, however, von Spee sent a message to the remaining German heavy cruiser, the SMS Gneisenau, and this message read, Endeavor to escape if your engines are still intact. However, the Gneisenau's boiler rooms had suffered damage during the course of the battle, and this reduced the Gneisenau's speed to a total of 16 knots. Despite her reduced speed, the Gneisenau continued to fight on, and at 1715 hours, she scored a direct hit on the HMS Invincible. However, at 1730 hours, she had been heavily damaged by the prolonged engagement with the Invincible and Flexible, as well as the HMS Carnivore. At 1802 hours that evening, the Gneisenau sank, with only 190 of her crew surviving. After the Gneisenau sank, there were only three cruisers left in the East Asia Squadron. These were the SMS Dresden, SMS Nuremberg, and the SMS Leipzig. While the Scharnhorst and Gneisenau were heavily engaged with the British cruiser squadron, the Nuremberg, Leipzig, and Dresden had fled from the oncoming British force. The Nuremberg, after a heavy chase by the HMS Kent, finally turned around to fight at 1730 hours. However, because of the prolonged strain on her boilers, two of them had exploded at 1830 hours, which dramatically reduced her speed, and she later sank at 1927 hours. The HMS Glasgow and HMS Cornwall had managed to chase down the cruiser Leipzig, which by this point was completely out of ammunition. However, the Leipzig continued to fly her battle ensign, but after a prolonged engagement at 21-23 hours, the Leipzig finally sank, with only 18 of her crew managing to survive. The Battle of the Falklands was an overwhelming victory for the British. The battle resulted in the death of von Spee and two of his sons who were serving on ships under his command, along with the loss of six of the eight ships in von Spee's East Asia Squadron. The two surviving ships were the auxiliary Sedlite and, of course, the SMS Dresden. Of the six ships sunk, only 215 German sailors managed to survive. Although the Dresden managed to survive the Battle of the Falklands, its luck was not meant to last. The day after the battle on the 9th of December, the Dresden passed around Cape Horn and anchored in Shoal Bay in Chile to take on coal because by now she had only 160 tons of coal on board. The Dresden's captain decided to take his ship across the Pacific Ocean via Easter Island, the Solomons, and the Dutch East Indies in an attempt to raid the Indian Ocean where they would raid commerce. On the 14th of February 1915, the Dresden left Chile and sailed into the Pacific Ocean. On the 8th of March, the Dresden's lookout spotted the British cruiser HMS Kent, and a chase began between the two ships that lasted for five hours. The Dresden got away, but the chase had exhausted the ship's entire coal supply, and the ship's engines, which were already in need of a desperate refit, were rendered unfit for any further service. Realizing the state his ship was in, Captain Ludica decided to sail the Dresden to Cumberland Bay near their Chilean island of Maze Fuera, where he hoped the Chilean authorities would intern his ship and save it from being sunk. On the 14th of March 1915, the HMS Kent, which was now joined by the HMS Glasgow, spotted the Dresden in Cumberland Bay and opened fire despite protests from both the Chilean authorities as well as the Dresden's own captain, who signaled the British saying the Dresden was no longer an armed combatant. Despite the protests, the two British warships continued to fire on the Dresden. In response, the Dresden's crew managed to fire three shots from her guns before they were finally taken out by the two British warships. Realizing their situation was hopeless, Ludica decided to raise the white flag of surrender, and he also ordered the crew to abandon ship, as well as the Dresden to be scuttled. After the crew abandoned ship, at 10.45 hours, the bow of the Dresden exploded as a scuttling charge that had been planted there went off and the forward magazines detonated along with the scuttling charge. In a half hour, the Dresden began to sink, and as the ship's hull slipped below the ocean's surface, a second charge, which had been planted inside the ship's engine room, exploded, sealing the Dresden's fate. 
With the Dresden sinking, the German Imperial Navy's East Asia Squadron had ceased to exist. The final death toll of the Battle of Maze Tierra, as it became known, was three of the Dresden's crew being killed, along with another 15 wounded. The British suffered no casualties of their own. The remainder of the Dresden's crew that hadn't been killed or wounded, which amounted to a total of 315 men, was interned for the remainder of the war in the country of Chile, because Chile, during the First World War, was a neutral country. In 2006, a combined expedition team of both Chilean and German divers dove on the wreck of the SMS Dresden in Cumberland Bay and managed to recover the ship's bell, which was later presented to the Museum of the German Armed Forces located in Dresden, Germany, where it is still on display today. Right, let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, so as you would expect from all Tier 2 cruisers in World of Warships, the armor on the Dresden is absolutely atrocious. The forehand plating is only 6 millimeters thick, whereas the plating along the side of the hulls, on both sides of the hull, is 9 millimeters, and the plating along the stern of the ship is only 6 millimeters, same as the bow of the ship. Superstructure is only 6 millimeters thick. Uh, the main battery turret armor is the only good armor on the ship. It's actually 50 millimeters of armor. Um, the conning tower is 100 millimeters of armor, which is, of course, really, really good, but you know, when you're shooting at an enemy ship, you're not going to be aiming for the conning tower. You're going to be aiming for the weak points, which is the ar armor plating, which, unfortunately, on the Dresden, it's just atrocious. It, it sucks. Um, that's not all that's um, bad with it. Um, with the artillery, with the guns that you get, it's actually not that bad. You get 105 millimeter guns when you upgrade this ship. The main battery firing range is 10.9 kilometers. Um, you get 12 105 millimeter guns after, of course, you upgrade the, the ship. Maneuverability isn't that bad. Um, maximum speed is 25 knots with a turning circle radius of 580 meters and a rudder shift time of 4.9 seconds. So overall, it's not a bad um, cruiser. Um, it's actually one of the most preferred cruisers, tier two cruisers in the game by World of Warships players because another reason why is its guns. Basically, when you're firing high explosive on the guns of the Dresden, it's like a fire hose. It puts out an insane amount of firepower when you're firing at enemy warships. And just to give you uh, an example, you know, when you upgrade it, the gunfire control system that gives you, that increases your range to 10.9 kilometers as opposed to the unupgraded fire control system, which is only 9.9 .9 kilometers of range. And also increases the firing range by 10%. So overall, it's not a bad sh cruiser for what it is. It's a nice tier 2 cruiser, and I enjoy playing it when I play on the lower tiers because you know what? If you're looking to go baby seal clubbing in World of Warships, you know, when you're having a tough time in the higher tiers, you know, trying to score points or get credits or stuff like that, you could always climb into the Dresden and just go baby seal clubbing and all the unsuspecting noobs and also the other players who suck at the higher tiers as well. <laughs> so on that note, let's go take a look and see how the Dresden handles out in the field. Right, so here we are on the big races map in the Dresden. Um, it's a tier 2, tier 3 match, so there's no ships here above tier 3, so thank god otherwise uh, the Dresden would have been in serious trouble. Um, and you're going to see a lot of the Dresden's advantages, but you're also going to see some of its disadvantages as well on this map. Um, one of those advantages is its speed. As you can see here, it actually gets up to top speed pretty quickly. Um, as you read before, it reaches a speed of about 25 knots uh, in the game, so it's actually a pretty pretty good uh, pr tier 2 cruiser. Um, but as you can see, the other members of my team, you know, we got the destroyers and the other cruisers who are doing exactly what I'm doing, going right out ahead and trying to scout out, but that's more of a job for the destroyers. And you're going to see in this match, um, like, the wrong way to handle destroyers and the wrong way to handle cruisers, and you're also going to see the right way. Um, as well. So right now we're just sort of going out ahead. Um, we're on the left flank of the, we're on the northern, most northern part of the map, on the left flank of our line, however you may call it, and we've already managed to spot the enemy team. There's an enemy cruiser out ahead. 
Uh, there's a couple more enemy warships, another cruiser, another destroyer. So let's start getting some shots out and see if we can start scoring some hits. Um, right now we're firing the armor piercing. Um, but generally when you go after destroyers, you want to fire a high explosive like I just did right now. I just switched to high explosive for the destroyers because it causes... It, it does a better job at causing damage to the destroyers than the armor piercing does. Armor piercing you want to save more for cruisers and also battleships. Um, so yeah, right now that destroyer in front of me just popped a smoke screen trying to lay down some cover for himself. And also, hopefully... <laughs> He took me and the other guys behind me um, in mind to provide us with some cover to hide from the incoming fire. Um, we managed to score three hits so far. Um, nothing else um, major like that so far, but it's still too early in the game to try to do anything like that. So right now we're just going to hang around here for a little bit and see if what uh, other enemy ships we can try to score some hits on, see if we can get some... See if We already scored first blood. Um... Whoa, that's close. Whoa, that, that is way, way too close. <laughs> oh, watch out. Ow. Yeah, that's another thing you want to be careful of um, on your team, is getting too close with other ships on your team. Otherwise, you have to run the potential of having uh, friendly fire incidents happening. That's happened to me on more than one occasion. Um, so, let's see. Scored 990 damage on that enemy cruiser. So yeah, it's going to get pretty hot. As you're going to see in this map, in this match, it actually gets pretty hot on this part. It seems like most of the ships on the enemy team decided to go up this way. Um, so we got two cruisers directly in front of me, so we're going to pay attention to them and see if we can take them out first. And then focus our attention on the rest of the enemy team. So yeah, we're just going to start firing off the armor piercing, seeing if we can score some citadels and hopefully sink some enemy ships. But right now that enemy cruiser is... I don't like the fact... Oh! Of all things, it's a Dresden. There's another enemy Dresden. So we gotta try to take that enemy Dresden out um, before he sinks any of the ships on our team. So let's try to see if we can level the playing field because each team already has lost one ship. So let's see if we can um, gain the upper hand. And there's my first kill. My Dresden took out the other Dresden. All right. Um, so we're gonna keep firing and see if we can score some other hits on the other ships on the enemy team so what do we got over there we got two cruisers three cruisers and a battleship so we've got our work cut out for us so we want to we don't want to go charging head on that's the last thing we want to do um we want to try to keep the distance and just pump as many shots as we can into those enemy ships so we're gonna fo i'm gonna focus my attention and let's see if we can I can score some hits on that enemy cruiser right there. Let's see what we can cause him some trouble. 989 damage. And I killed him. All right. That's kill number two. And also, in case you were pay weren't, paying weren't paying attention like I was, I was just focusing on that enemy ship. The other two enemy cruisers have been sunk as well, so that just leaves that enemy battleship, which happens to be a Nassau. And whoa. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? You want to be careful. You don't want to go ramming into other ships on your team. So, And that's a Nassau. Yep. Definitely want to try to keep your distance because one thing about the Nassau, it is definitely one of the best Tier 3 battleships in the game. And the reason why is because it's just bristling with gun turrets. I mean, it's got six of them. Three on each side. So you definitely want to be uh, careful when you're dealing with a Nassau. Otherwise, if you get... If you show your broadside to a Nassau and you're in a Tier 2 cruiser, you're just asking to get paddled, is what you're asking for. So we're just going to do what we're doing right now and uh, just fire off high explosive, see if we can cause fires. That's the one thing you do. If you're in a cruiser and you're going up against a battleship, what I like to do is I just like to fire off the high explosive and cause fires because that just, make, that just makes you a bigger pain in the bigger pain in the butt for the, the enemy battleship player. So yeah, we're just going to keep firing off the high explosive as is a lot of the members on my team. See if we can try to sink this guy. Any time now. Oh, set a fire. Any time. Any time now. Just a matter of time. Yeah, now he's showing his bow to me, but... Oh! 
All right, we managed to sink him. I didn't sink him. One of the other guys on my team managed to sink him. Um, so, yeah, we've managed to destroy that part of the team. And right now, my team is in the lead. We currently have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four. Oh, now we have eight. We used to have nine. Now we're down to eight. The enemy team has five. So right now we're doing pretty good. Um, we've gained the upper hand, certainly. And now what we're going to do... So right now we only have one enemy ship spotted. And it's that cruiser. If you look down in the right-hand corner on the map, you'll see just one enemy cruiser spotted. And there's four enemy ships left. So I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to bet that the rest of the enemy team is on the other side of that island right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to sail ahead and see if we can spot the rest of the enemy team because I guarantee you that's where they are because when you look at the other positions of all the ships on my team none of the other, none of the enemy team is spotted to the south to the south um, southwest so I guarantee you they're on the other side of that island and there's one it's another enemy battleship um, so yeah that that's just a dead giveaway I we know for a fact that they have to be on the other side of that island and I was right there's a cruiser and there's the enemy destroyer who just vanished um, but he's over there so there's two destroyers a cruiser and a battleship yeah, that destroyer just came back again so we definitely want to be careful um, but we want to make sure that we keep them spotted and I've been detected so right now we're just gonna see if we can cause some trouble because right now they're not I'm spotted but the enemy team isn't paying any attention to me. <laughs> they seem to be more focused with the other enemy ships, with the other ships on my team that are on the other side of the map, on the other side of that island. So we're just going to pop off some shots and see if we can, you know, cause some trouble for that cruiser and whatever else that we can find on the other side of the island. It's taking a while, you know. Yes, the, the Dresden could go sail up to 25 knots, but it's still... It takes a while, so... We need to um, just play our cards right and hope we can, you know, win this match. Because, as you've all seen before, things can go horribly wrong at the last second when you think you've got the game in the bag. So right now we're firing at long range. And if, as you notice, you know, firing at long ranges such as this, the Dresden's guns do manage to keep um, a level of accuracy. You know, the, the shots don't get spread out all over the place. They do manage to land hits on the target and manage to stay, you know, together. And right now I'm actually sailing into a bad spot because if you look to the right, there's an enemy, another enemy Nassau that's sitting right there. So we've got a Nassau to my front right. We've got a enemy cruiser to my left or directly in front of me. And inside that smoke screen is an enemy destroyer. And I'm taking hits from that Nassau, so they definitely see me now. So I definitely, I'm definitely not in a good spot. So I'm playing my cards to see if that Nassau can get taken out before he takes out me. And there's the enemy destroyer. Right, he knows he's spotted. He's shooting his guns at me. He's trying to sail away. But I'm firing my high explosive. And we're going to take him out before he can take me out. And that Nassau just got taken out, so I'm safe for the moment. Um, let's see if we can take this guy out first, though. Yep. There we go. Kill number three. There we go. Alright, so that cruiser is gone. That Dresden is sunk. Uh, not Dresden. Nassau is sunk. And that enemy destroyer is sunk. So that just leaves one enemy destroyer left on the enemy team. And we've got the numbers. We've got the ability. We're not... We're not going to cap like little bitches. No, we're going to chase this last guy down and we're going to sink him and just finish off the rest of the enemy team. So, I guarantee you, he's. we saw him sailing this way earlier. So he's sitting over there in this corner of the map right now. He's probably on full brown alert. Yep, he's over this way. He, I've just been detected. So he sees me. But that's one thing, one drawback with the Dresden. It ha doesn't really have a good view range. Um, the view range is actually um, not as good as some of the other ships, you know, in Tier 2 and Tier 3. So, but, oh, there's the enemy destroyer. Um, I'm going to see if we can sink him before he can launch a full broadside of torpedoes at me. So, yep, we're just going to come on, follow him. Lead your target. 
Oh, scored a hit. And now the rest of the got people on my team are now oop, incapacitation. I took out his uh, propeller. All right. So, and now everybody else on my team is shooting at him. Everybody wants the last kill. <laughs> so, yeah, we pretty much got this game in the bag. Um, I'm just trying to... Oh, and I took out his propeller again. Um, so, and the problem is now with him, this is repair, and he sunk. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, the Dresden. Overall, for Tier 2, not a bad little ship. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and as always, I'll see you all later.